there was a report done that was 16 things you don't know, but you probably should. And this is from Strategus Research. I just highlighted two of them that I wanted to point out and bring up and just kind of talk with you about here, Jake. The first one- oh, Hold that's on, listed, hold on. These are things you may not know, but probably, but probably should. should. What a good title. Yeah, 16 things you may not know, but probably should. Okay. Um, one is that nearly one third of America's outstanding debt, so think the treasury and the government, matures within the next year and overall marketable debt carrying a weighted average cost of 3.02%. Uh, when I look at this, Jake, this tells me that there we know the government has a lot of debt. We know that governments around the world have a lot of debt. But in the United States, there's a whole lot that's set to mature in the next year or two. And the average cost to the government on that debt is around 3%. We know where interest rates are at now. I'm just curious, Jake, what's your... Do you have an opinion on this? What do you think about this? Because I look at this data and I think if the government continues to spend money at the same clip, that it's going to get very expensive for them to do so because rates are higher. Unless they either have more revenue from taxes or the government is spending less money or interest rates go down. But it seems like one of those three outcomes has to occur based on this. What do you think? Right. I think it's a little scary, Corey. So like you're saying that a third of it's going to mature which means they're not going to pay it off. They're just going to refinance it, right? And roll it probably into higher interest debt. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're suggesting? Correct. So yeah, I, I think that it's long overdue, but there needs to be a, a fiscal overhaul in America's spending. I know the debt ceiling has been raised. So my thought is that it's probably going to need to be raised again because of this pretty quickly. And so... I don't like it. I think if any citizen managed their debt the way America manages their debt, yeah, they'd be in a whole heap of trouble and out of money. But America gets to print the money, so it's not. So yes, I think it needs an overhaul. But I wouldn't, as an investor or a retiree mm -hmm. or just an individual, I wouldn't be overly concerned about this, even though I don't necessarily like it. Because ultimately... You know, the government, because they're making the laws, will just flip it, roll it, do what they need to do to adjust. And hopefully we'll get some responsible politicians in there to make good decisions to get that pointed in a better direction. But I ultimately, Corey, as long as the economy grows, you know, and GDP grows, then they can overcome this debt pretty easily. So I, I don't think that it's necessarily tightening the belt. That needs to happen. It needs to be robust growth, more people paying taxes, not higher taxes, but more people working, making good wages. So I would love the economy to grow Expand, so that yeah. the debt becomes smaller. But you can't Which do what both. happened after World War II. Right. But what yes. And and what what has been happening though is both have been growing. So yeah. you need to have some tightening there on the spending, but I'd love to see the economy grow. But yeah, it's 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 good. It's a scary chart. Do you have a nicer chart to show? What's your second chart? <laughs> do I have, yes, I do. Well, I nicer. I'll let you tell me if it's nicer. Uh, but I think that this is really helpful for people to see and to understand too, um, because we've talked about this some on the show, uh, as far as the S&P 500, the stock market in the United States, the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500, which is five, actually 503 companies, I think, uh, have accounted for 96% of the index's returns this year at the end of September. So 96.5% of the S&P 500's returns this year have come from 10 stocks. And the next closest year was 78.7%. And I think this is important just for us to highlight and to talk about, because I think it is important for people to understand what makes up the S&P 500 and what drives the returns. But if someone is thinking they're going to be equally diversified across 500 companies in the S&P 500, if they buy an ETF or whatever it may be. I just think it's important to understand that that's really not what's going on. Right. So yes, you have to be careful. I would be very hesitant for any, you know, again, this isn't advice, but don't buy an S&P 500 fund, like you just said, and think that you're diversified. Basically 10 stocks are carrying that whole index. So my argument, Corey, is that the S&P 500 probably isn't a good gauge to really what's going on in the market anymore. Because you're basically getting a sample size of 10 is really what it's telling you what 10 stocks are doing. And if I told a client, I don't care about anything else. I'm just going to tell you what these 10 stocks are doing. And that's how the whole world is doing. They would laugh at me. And so right. 
I'm glad you shared this and, and you're right. And, and we actually take an equal weight stance. And historically speaking, one could argue that equal weight may perform better. Nobody knows the future. So I'm not suggesting we are trying to predict the future with that. But also we would much rather be equal than cap weighted and risk volatility, more volatility than is necessary. Because again, last year, these stocks drug the market down too. I mean, you could see on your chart, 2020 wasn't that long ago when it was driving it in 2007. So you just have to be careful with the S&P 500. Again, it's it, it's something, it's a barometer, but it's not the end all be all of really how the market's doing. I like this chart because it's just telling you how 10 stocks are doing really. Right. Yeah. But the 97% is such a high percentage. That surprised me when I saw that. Right. 